Lenovo reached out and asked if I wanted to review this unit right here. I had seen one article on this laptop before and I'd actually seen it on their website as like a soon to come release item and I was pretty fascinated with it but you know I didn't know what to expect when they asked me if I wanted to review it. They sent it over the whole time I was thinking I don't know how I'm really going to cover this device because it is a laptop but it's so strange. So what I decided to do is just get it and just start messing around with it. So this one right here is the Yoga Book 9i. It's a 13 inch, 13 inch screen. It has two of them though, as you can see here. And this is a brand new model that's upcoming for 2023. Very fascinating device. I have it set up here in kind of a weird orientation, but you're gonna see in this video, you can do a lot with this here. And what I think a lot of people will get from this device here is that it's kind of super hybridized. So depending on what environment you're in, what type of workflow you're in, I think you're gonna be using this in different ways. So you know, if you're just sitting on your couch for the day, just typing up something, you may use it in laptop mode. If you're on a plane, maybe the same thing. If you're in a cafe or a class or you know a business meeting, you may want to set it up like this and you're gonna have two screens going at the same time. It's not one specific device. It's not a laptop or a tablet or a two-in-one. It's kind of all these things at one time. So there's not a lot of different options for this. It basically has one CPU, at least at the time of recording this. 1355U, so it's gonna be actually pretty good. It's gonna be a good processor in terms of performance to power usage. So despite the fact that this is a pretty thin and light laptop and you don't have a gigantic battery in it, you should get pretty good battery life anyways. And obviously then we get into the most impressive part and that's the two screens. So this is a dual screen device. I think this is more interesting, at least to me, than those kind of flip devices that you know Microsoft makes and Samsung that have the, cr the crease down the center because that's, you know, they're kind of trying to turn into one singular screen, which is fine, I guess but I don't think that's gonna be useful for a lot of people. You know, you can see that notch, and then you have one screen, and you're trying to adapt it into a single screen setup. This one here is two dedicated screens. So, you know, you have your touch screens, but it's also OLED. So both of these are OLED panels. They're identical screens, 1800p, 60 hertz refresh rate, OLED panels, 400 nits, beautiful calibrated displays. So they're gonna be good for professionals. Obviously you have that calibration, the confidence in the colors, good color range, OLED, so you get absolute blacks. Something like, almost like a desktop style setup with dual screens. And then you have your keyboard there. If you needed a dock, you can hook that up there. Uh, you know, you can use your pen as well. But there's obviously other ways you can use this as well. You can take it off the device here. It doesn't weigh anything. So you can have it in laptop mode. So, you know, it immediately it's switched to portrait mode there. And you can see here it doesn't really, it has two touch screens. So, you know, I could use it like this and have one thing down there, one up here, use it with the keyboard, or I could have it like a laptop. And you can see there now we have the touch screen controls. And, you know, I'm typing away, typing away on that. You get your trackpad down here, so you can use that as a trackpad, like a normal device, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I mean, you can use it then with a mouse and keyboard, or you can go like this. You can detach this here, use it like that. You get your keyboard here. If you want a dedicated keyboard, you don't like the kind of touch thing, which I actually found is not bad because it has haptics. Then you can use your trackpad down here, as you can see, coffee shop, whatever, you know, do my drawings, whatever, I'm done for the day. Okay, pack it up, ba 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 and I'm good to go. And this is it here, it's a 13 inch laptop. Very, very premium in the hand, so I'm gonna give you the outside aspects here. So, super premium in the hand, all metal. All metal, obviously. Good weight to it, feels very premium. Kind of like um, a MacBook Air, maybe a little bit heavier and a tiny bit thicker than a MacBook Air. There's a lot more in this than a MacBook Air, obviously. Uh, so, it's a nice, beautiful, kind of like midnight blue kind of look there. So, it's like a metallic midnight blue. It's, uh, intakes like this, these venting intakes, it'll pull in, cool all the components and then push out the back there. So it's actually almost identical to that. This might be an intake, but most likely these are speakers here. You're gonna be limited on ports here. Obviously it's kind of a tablet type device, um, but you get your USB-C here. This gives power, it's a Thunderbolt enabled. So you get power delivery, you get display out, you get power in and it's a Thunderbolt. Oh, and you have actually two more on this side. So it has more ports than I thought. So you actually get three USB-C ports. So that's really not bad. Um, you know, this is going to be your primary when you can plug in power and display and all that. And then these are, you know, going to do power as well. And they're Thunderbolt, so. And there you go. Look at that. Fascinating, fascinating device. So it's a dual touchscreen. Basically, you take two tablets and you stick them together. Very, very thin. You know, this is, the, this is thinner than really most tablets. It's just a screen. This is like tablet thick. Tap the lower screen with fingers to call up the... Ooh, look at that. That's very cool. Full-size keyboard built in, and obviously these are both very nice screens, so it you know, doesn't look weird. It's not like they have an inferior screen down here, and your digital touch touchpad. Some people don't like glossy screens, touch screens. I mean, touch screens are always going to be glossy. Um, typically, they're going to be glossy. Um, I don't mind glossy screens. In fact, I actually prefer them. Even if it's not touch, I prefer glossy screens because the colors are substantially more vibrant. You will have to deal with reflection, reflectivity, if you're getting a glossy screen. But if you care a lot about color accuracy and just you know having a very vibrant screen, you're going to want to get a glossy screen. It comes with it. You know, you can set it on here with magnetized. 
and then you can start you know typing out your business oh it looks like it pops up there so when this is attached you get uh, two little screens there so you can start typing here get your screens there. you can probably slide it up and then it turns into a trackpad so that's very cool <clears throat> so I'm just exploring this as you guys are exploring it so we'll set this uh, standoff to the side there yeah that's really cool actually so in this orientation here you get basically a trackpad on the bottom so uh, there's a the trackpad it'll it looks like it comes all the way down so you can bring it down here you can have it up here so there's my trackpad um, right click okay and then when you bring this down here it's magnetized so it doesn't just slide like you actually have to intentionally do that intentionally do that and right away it snaps up and then you have other things here so you know you can set these up with different options screen there so I guess you could use it as a touch screen but if you had the mouse set up you could do it like that so you could have the keyboard down here second screen here so if you're doing I don't know let's just say video editing or something like that you could have your timeline down here and you could scroll through your timeline and then you could have your actual video up here and you know, clips and that kind of thing okay and then you could have something like this set up here so you know I have my uh, my PowerPoint presentation up here that I'm working on you know I'm working on a PowerPoint presentation down here I have a Word document you know so I just have a Word document down here that I'm working on you know maybe I'm typing in here whatever and then over here I have my files so if I or like a website or something that I'm bringing imagery from or you know data or something like that so turn it up it's very loud this is only 80 the iPhone will regulate the sound, but it's very loud. It's extremely loud. 100 is extremely loud, like to the point of being uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, it gets really loud, we'll put it that way. Um, even like 60 is loud. Shockingly good speakers for what it is. I'm like, this would be, you know, if you look at a very hyper premium tablet, that's the kind of sound you're getting out of this. It, but all that said, I still think it's pretty lame that there's seven levels when in reality there's just three levels seven times. Reuse levels. What is this? Silent Hill 4? Am I right? On that note, um, could somebody please make a mod of Silent Hill 2 that replaces all the characters with the models from the Simpsons Hit and Run? I'm willing to pay for it. So, I mean, obviously the screens are identical. They are most likely the exact same panel. And uh, my guess is that Lenovo, um, Lenovo is going to obviously calibrate these and make sure that they're the same. Because, you know, you can buy a screen from a manufacturer and then they're not calibrated, so they look weird. This is meant to be, you know, a universal device, a uniform device. So it's evident to me that these have been calibrated. They look quite literally identical. Really, really nice there. Um, you know, the contrast is quite good. Um, so, you know, you're getting like basically near infinite contrast ratio, perfect blacks kind of thing there. A lot of people who would be getting this would be working with colors and doing professional style work, um, video editing or photo editing, you know, graphic design, this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looks, the colors look really nice. Uh, as you'd expect, the blacks are superb. Zero like weird, like bloom or anything around them. Colors look great. Um, okay, so we'll come in here and we'll type with this first and we'll see how this actually works. Um, I'm a touch, semi-touch typist, so I might suck at this, uh, but we'll see here. So um, let's see how the palm rejection is. Yeah, I mean, considering that's the first time I've ever typed on something like this, that actually went pretty well. Let's turn that off there. Um, yeah, it actually went surprisingly well. It's got a haptic feedback. The whole device has like a haptic motor in it. I don't know where it is, but there's a haptic motor in here and you can feel it throughout the whole device. So when you're typing, you get a little tiny bit of reverb um, or whatever you want to call it, vibration, micro vibration, which helps give you a tactile feel. I mean, when you're pressing a key, you get a tactile feel. If you're typing on your phone, Unless you have the audio on, you don't really have any feedback that you've like hit a key. Here, it gives you that little vibrate. So, and this is also a touchscreen. So, I mean, it feels good. This, it's a gl glass touchscreen as a result. So, this is what you pay for as a premium item on a lot of laptops. You get like a premium glass touchpad, and obviously, this is a glass touch glass touchpad. So, I mean, that feels great. And uh, there's a haptics here too. So, haptic, haptic. So, it's not like. Um, it's going to be the same as using like a normal. So you can still do all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to actually do it up here, you know, where you're scrolling and doing that kind of stuff, right? You can do it down here. You can do, you know, your, this button here, I believe will make it right click. Yep. So that, that makes it right click. 
So you're not missing out on any like Windows features. You're like, how do I come over here and make a, like a new folder or something like, like that? Um, and then this is uh, like drag and drop. So if you press that button there, drag and drop. Same as the Microsoft Surface Pen. Um, you know, I've used Microsoft Surface Pens many times. I've used Dell Pens. I've used Lenovo Pens. Some of them suck. Some of them are good. Uh, Surface Pens are always good, to be honest. Surface Pens are always good. Apple Pens are always good. Lenovo has some not great pens and Dell has some not great pens. But I think that also comes down to like the tablet. This one is one of the better ones. So let's actually put this into tablet mode now. What happens to the back screen? It turns off. So the back screen turns off. I was worried that the back screen would stay on and I would be hitting it by accident, but it looks like the back screen turns off. Yeah, and so these are all working, testing all these features here. Um, you know, we could draw a little picture here. Check the palm rejection. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's perfect. We'll zoom in a little bit here and you can see what it does with these lines here. So, uh, you know, if you just do a very slow line, I'm looking at my camera through the camera and it is janky because I'm janky. Like I'm actually not making straight lines, but if you go quick, it smooths them. You can see there. So that's me doing a slower line and my hand is moving probably because I had too much coffee. And, uh, but if you do quick lines, it smooths them out. So you can see these ones are not smooth because you're probably drawing something and maybe you want it to look like that, right? Like that's how you want the line to look when you're drawing. But if you're writing, you can see, I think you can see, it's actually fixing, see like that one's a little bit janky. And then I'll write like nicely, I guess, nicely for me. It's fixing them, see? Yeah, so it feels really nice to type on. If you've used an idea pad or uh, yoga, I mean, they have, Lenovo has lots of yogas and idea pads. It, it is literally that keyboard, just in like a portable format. There's a reason why in all my videos I say Lenovo makes the best keyboards. That's because Lenovo makes the best keyboards. Whether you like their devices is up to you, but you're not going to be able to argue that their keyboards aren't awesome. All right, we're going to go like that, triangle. I'm sure there's other ways you can set it up, but we're going to go with the triangle. And then, you know, then you have... That goes magnetized there. So oh, that was really snappy. So, you know, triangle mode. And now we have laptop mode. So this is like true laptop mode, folded in half. Um, and then, you know, you have your keyboard hooked up here. And then you have this here. Now, what I see is actually very compelling about this is the actual footprint is pretty small, to be honest. So from the side here, um, you know, a lot of the screen is going to be, a lot of the footprint is going to be in the back here. But what's in front of you, is uh, a little bit smaller here. So, you know, you can get the screen on a nice little angle there. It's not going to be sitting further back from you, right? So if you're on like a, if you're on a train or a plane or something like that, typically, you know, you have the large keyboard sets you out this far and then the screen is back there. So you, it's a little bit further away. And if you wear glasses or something, you're gonna have to wear those. Whereas this, it's right up close to you. So if you're on a small, you know, table or something like that, you know, this is right in front of me now. Detach the keyboard for a second here. And uh, let's try this. I'm just curious if it'll do this. Oh yeah, look at that, that's a huge amount of screen. So technically, I think it's still, you know, two screens. Let's adjust my camera now in front of me. Now I have two basically giant documents in front of me. So, you know, this is the size of a envelope that's if you take that piece of paper here, just so you know how big this is, like in the real world. I mean, you know, you have a basically a paper sized document in front of you. So you can have a full PDF here. And like, if you're working on a Word document, you can put it over here. So, you know, I have my Word over here. Um, no, we want to go full screen there, bud. So, you know, you're, you're doing a research paper on Lenovo um, for your computer science class. And, you know, you have your full document. You have your full PDF over here or website. So you can read a whole thing over there. And then over here, you have your actual document. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, this might be the most compelling way to use it um, for a, like this is there's a lot of screen in front of me right now. Right. It's magnetized. So the whole thing moves now. It's not like you're gonna be feeling like it's in, unsecure and you have a mouse. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you can really get a lot of work done like that. So I think this is, this might be the way that I'd use it here. Okay, here's a test of the built-in webcam. Uh, it actually looks quite nice. This is definitely a 1080p webcam and some of them on laptops say 1080p, but they're blurry or the color 
is really bad. This one actually looks quite nice. Um, I mean, it's a premium laptop, you'd expect no less, but the movement looks really nice. That, it's sorting out pretty well. Um, I mean, you can see here, it's doing a really good job with a darker room. It's actually lighted, it actually automatically lighted me up. So um, yeah, I mean, it's actually a really nice webcam. Okay, so I'm running the Cinebench here in the background, the multi-core, we'll can monitor their temperatures here. Uh, it's very quiet. Like there's noise coming from, I don't know, my vents or something, I guess. It's way loud, like vastly louder than this. So, I mean, it's silent. Um, again, we're on battery mode, so I mean, it's not gonna be ripping, but you can see it's it's decided to kick the fans in a little bit, even though they're super quiet. And we went, you know, they, right there, the fans weren't going, so we throttled for a moment or two. And then now, you know, the, the fans have kicked in. So we're actually staying pretty cool. I'm flat on a desk here too. Um, but again, the vents come out of here, they don't come directly from the bottom. So flat on a desk, you actually should get decent enough airflow because again it's not sitting the fans aren't running from the very bottom um what's the wattage here and uh wattage here so it looks like we're running at 25 watts on battery 25 watts or so so pretty good to be honest max was 36 um probably boost it up there for a moment, uh, you know, how Windows will boost for a bit. Okay, so let's plug it in and see how it runs then on battery. Uh, score on, multi-core score on uh, battery was, that's actually pretty good, 7833 on battery um, for the Intel 13th gen. So that's better than I thought, and considering how quiet it is too. So yeah, anyways, let's plug it in and see how it runs then. So, you know, we're below 40, very, very quiet laptop. Even when we're running Cinebench and basically blasting it, in performance mode on uh, power. Uh, oops, let's check what our score was there. So 8,800, so it went up a fair bit. Um, it's actually running very well on battery. That's the one thing that I find kind of surprising here. And to close things out here, we'll just look at the Crystal Dismark scores. You can see here that it has a very fast NVMe SSD inside. So we're getting reads of 5,000 uh, megabytes a second, writes of 4,000. So, you know, that's gen four speeds, quite good. And it's not going to have the best battery life, but it's not terrible, to be honest. We have 84% battery life left here, and we're getting about five hours left um, with that. So, you know, you're going to get about five and a half hours. This is during YouTube playback, and I have both screens on the top and the bottom at 100% brightness, and I'm on, uh, you know, better battery mode or whatever. So typically, you know, if you're just word editing, if you're just text editing, you'll probably get about six hours, maybe six and a half at most. If, you know, you're watching heavy, if you're watching YouTube in that, you might get four to five hours or so.